In this video, we're going to work out some examples of finding and classifying flipping solutions to nonlinear systems. We have our first nonlinear system here with two components, and I want to find the equilibrium solutions. How do we do it? We do it by looking for where dx dt and dy dt are both zero at the same time. So using our equations, this is x minus 2, x minus 2, y equals 0, y plus 2, x minus y equals 0. So splitting these up, I get that x equals 2 or x equals 2y for the x equation. And for the y, I get y is minus 2 or x equals y. Now I can pair these up and see what happens because I want these to be equal to zero at the same time. And so the points I get here are two comma minus two for picking this two and this minus two. I get two and two for these two lining up because if x is y then x and y are both two. I get x is two y and y equals minus two. That means that y is minus two and x is minus four. And if I have x is 2y and x equals y, that means they must both be 0. The only point where those lines meet is at 0, 0. So there are my four equilibrium solutions for this problem. Now, to classify these, I want to find the linearization at each of these points. The easiest way to do this is to find the linearization sort of as a Jacobian matrix overall, and then just plug in these values to see what we get. So as a matrix, this J of XY, which is my Jacobian, is going to be FX, FY, GX, and GY, where I have DX, DT equaling F of XY, and DY, DT equals G of XY. So if we zoom out a bit, we can see that this right here is my F, and this here is G. So I can differentiate those in X and Y by the product rule. So we differentiate that first equation in x, the first term goes to 1, so I just get x minus 2y, and the second term goes to 1 plus x minus 2. The f dy will just hit this negative 2y here. We'll get negative 2 times x minus 2. For dg dx, I just get the 1 from this x here, so I just get y plus 2. And for gy, we're differentiating this function here in y. So with the first term, this goes to 1. I get an x minus y. And for the second, this will become a negative 1, so I'll get minus y minus 2. We can then simplify the expressions here. We get that my j of xy b 2x minus 2y minus 2, negative 2 times x minus 2, y plus 2, and x minus 2y minus 2. Now we can plug in each of our four equilibrium solutions to figure out what type of linearized system we have at that point. So the first point, 2 comma minus 2, we get 4 plus 4 minus 2, negative 2 times 2 minus 2, negative 2 plus 2, and 2 plus 4 minus 2, which is 6, 0, 0, 4 which this has eigenvalues lambda 1 is 6 and lambda 2 is 4 because it's a diagonal matrix. And so therefore this will act like a nodal source, which is unstable. For our second point, we had 2 comma 2, which plugging in will give us 4 minus 4 minus 2, negative 2 times 2 minus 2, 2 plus 2, and 2 minus 4 minus 2 simplifies 2, negative 2, 0, 4, negative 4. This will have eigenvalues of minus 2 and minus 4 because it's a triangular matrix. This is a nodal sink, so it's asymptotically stable. For a third point, we had negative 4, negative 2, which we can plug into the function and simplify it out. Get a matrix that is negative 6, 12, 0, negative 2. This is again triangular, so it has eigenvalues of minus 6 and minus 2, and so therefore is also like a nodal sink and will be asymptotically stable. And then finally, the point of the origin, 0, 0, which based on the matrix function here will be minus 2, 4, 2, and minus 2. This isn't triangular or diagonal, so we have to use the quadratic formula to find the eigenvalues here. 
we'll get a minus two minus lambda, minus two minus lambda, minus eight, a lambda squared, minus four lambda, plus four minus eight, is lambda squared minus four lambda minus four. This does not factor, so if we plot the quadratic formula, we get that lambda is four plus or minus the square root of 16 minus four AC, so plus 16 again, because it's four times four over two. This will be four plus or minus four root two over two, or two plus or minus two root two. Now since two root two is bigger than two, two root two is bigger than one, this will be two eigenvalues of opposite signs, the positive one at two plus root two, the negative at two minus root two. These are real and distinct, but opposite signs. Therefore this acts like a saddle and is unstable. So there's example one, working out what these linearizations look like. And we see from this one, we have two different equilibrium solutions that are asymptotically stable, these two right here. And so it's likely that most solutions will funnel into one of those two. We don't really know which one at this point. And we have two that are unstable, where solutions will normally run away from those two solutions. Now we have a second example that's going to follow the exact same procedure. So first we want to find the equilibrium solutions, which is where the derivatives are both zero at the same time. So we have that y minus one times x plus three, y minus three equals zero and x plus three times x plus y equals zero. So we get y equals one, or x plus three y equals three. Or on the other side, x equals minus three, or x equals y. We're gonna get four points as well from pairing up the different pairs over here. In that first pair, I get negative three and one. If I pair one with x equals y, I get the point one, one. If I pair this equation with x equals minus three, I'll get that three y equals six, or I will get that x is minus three and y must be two. And if I pair this with this here, which should be the x is minus y, which means I will also get a minus one on this. This point here is now minus one, one, because I'd messed up there was a minus x is an x plus y. And if I pair those up, I will get that two y equals three which means y is 3 halves, and so x is then minus 3 halves. There are four solutions. Now we have to classify them by using the linearization or Jacobian matrix, like in the last example. So for this, our Jacobian is fx, fy, gx, dy, which we can see from the equations above. fx will just be y minus 1 fy will be x plus 3y minus 3 plus 3 times y minus 1 by the product rule. gx will be x plus y plus x plus 3 and gy will be just x plus 3. So our simplified matrix here is going to be y minus 1 x plus 6y minus 6 2x plus y plus 3, and x plus 3. All right, now we want to plug in our different equilibrium solutions to figure out what these different points look like. So for the first point, at minus 3 comma 1, we get 1 minus 1 is 0. This will be minus 3 plus 6 minus 6. We'll see minus 6 plus 1 plus 3, and then 0 where the matrix zero, minus three, minus two, and zero. Now this is not entirely obvious what the eigenvalues are, but let's see what we get if we try to solve for them. If we do that, we'll be looking at zero minus lambda, zero minus lambda, minus six, so we have two minus signs there, which then becomes lambda squared minus six, so our eigenvalues are at plus and minus root six, which are real and opposite signs. This will act like a saddle so that it's unstable. The next point to plug in is minus one comma one. Do that, we get zero here. We'll get minus one plus six minus six. We will get minus two plus one plus three. And we will get negative one 
plus 3. This becomes 0, minus 1, 2, 2. And we can try to find the eigenvalues here. Because again, they're not obvious. This is not triangular or diagonal in any way. The eigenvalues are found by 0 minus lambda. 2 minus lambda plus 2 is lambda squared minus 2 lambda plus 2. And the quadratic formula tells us that lambda should be 2 plus or minus square root of 4 minus 8 over 2 is going to be 1 plus or minus i, which is complex with positive real part. This will be unstable as a spiral source. Our third point to plug in is minus 3 and 2, which for this we get a 2 minus 1, minus 3 plus 12 minus 6, minus 6 plus 2 plus 3, minus 3 plus 3 which becomes 1, 3, minus 1, and 0. Again, we have the quadratic formula here for the eigenvalues. 1 minus lambda, 0 minus lambda, plus 3. Lambda squared minus lambda plus 3. This doesn't factor. And so we again go back to the quadratic formula, which will tell us that lambda should be 1 plus or minus square root of b squared is 1 minus 4ac is 12 over 2. Again, this is complex, positive real part. So this is also unstable as a spiral source. And then our last point was minus 3 halves, 3 halves, which we can plug in. And then we can simplify this to a 1 half. This here is a 9. So 9 minus 6 is 3, minus 3 halves is positive 3 halves. This here is a minus 3 plus 3, so a 3 halves down here as well. And a positive 3 halves in the bottom right. Again, we will need the normal approach to eigenvalues and eigenvectors here. 1 half minus lambda, 3 halves minus lambda, minus 9 fourths, which I can simplify to a lambda squared minus 3 halves lambda minus 1 half lambda plus 3 fourths minus 9 fourths. So lambda squared minus 2 lambda minus 3 halves. That'll be in minus 6 over 4. And again, we are down to using quadratic formula here on this which will tell us that lambda should be 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 plus 4 times 3 halves over 2. Now what I can say at this point is I know that this bit here will have a value that is bigger than 2 because this is 4 plus something and since root 4 is 2, I'm doing 2 plus or minus something bigger than 2 which means this will be 2 real eigenvalues with opposite signs. So it's going to act like a saddle and still be unstable. If you work this out one more step, you'll get 2 plus or minus, that becomes root 10 over 2, which is going to be opposite signs. And so that's working out that example there as well. What you might find interesting here is that there are no asymptotically stable web solutions here. That's fine, that can happen. It just means that the values of the solutions aren't converging to any equilibrium solution as time goes on. They are all running away to infinity because in order for them to converge to. So that's a couple of examples on how to work them out and get to solutions for finding and classifying equilibrium solutions for these nonlinear systems.